dear students today we will be discussing about fundamentals of solar concentrating collectors and analysis of parabolic trough collector now what is concentrating solar power technology this concentrating solar power technology utilizes focus sunlight the concentrators increases the amount of incident energy on the observer surface as compared to that on the concentrator aperture and this csp technology utilizes mirrors or lenses to concentrate sun's energy and convert it into high temperature heat so the kind of collectors we are discussing in the last classes those collectors could be employed for generation of fluid temperature of about 100 or slightly more than 100 degree c but if we have to generate high temperature or we have to think of application of high temperature application more than say 200 300 or maybe 400 so we need to go for concentrating solar collectors okay so how it will work that's what we have explained here and with the help of other slides we will understand what is the importance of this technology as far as high temperature application generation is concerned so this concentrating solar power technology follows sun so that the beam radiation are always focused on the observer so as you can see here a solar concentrator generally consist of a reflector this is a reflector okay or concentrator we can say and this is a receiver so solar radiation comes and strike on this reflector and it reflects to this observer okay that's how it works and heat transfer fluid flow through this receiver and then that can be collected in a collection unit and that can be applied or used as per the applications so we need a focusing device this is nothing but a focusing device an absorber or receiver so this is an absorber or receiver so that may be with or without transparent cover sometimes so if we draw this tube through which heat transfer fluid flows so this may be no steel or maybe copper okay so material of construction is copper and just above it we'll have a glass transparent cover okay this is glass so this is glass okay so that's why it is said with or without transparent cover and of course we need a tracking device for continuously following the sun okay so in case of flat plate collector that kind of systems are not required so that is installed in a location based on the phi value or latitude value okay and that is fixed throughout the year and but in case of concentrating collector we need to rotate the device based on the solar radiation or to capture solar radiation throughout the day so there are some advantages of this kind of technologies so first is it's a better thermodynamic efficiency because its operating temperature is higher or range of temperature is higher and less material requirement compared to flat plate collector and reduced storage cost okay so these are the primary advantages of this solar concentrating collectors and as you can say or as we have said no temperature as high as 3500 degree c have been achieved by using this kind of collectors okay so these are high temperature collectors the solar collectors are used for thermal as well as pv conversion of solar energy so there are some drawbacks like we cannot employ diffuse radiation for energy conversion okay only beam radiation are applied in case of csp and that's why we need a clear sky or cloudless sky 
for installation of this kind of devices. So, how this solar concentrator works if we have to see this concentrating solar power system generate electricity with heat that we must know. This concentrating solar collectors use mirrors and lenses to concentrate and focus sunlight onto a thermal receiver similar to a boiler tube like conventional power plant. The receiver absorb and convert sunlight into heat. Okay. The heat is then transported to steam generator or engine where it is converted to electricity. Right. So, when we talk about solar PV system, so it converts sunlight to electricity directly, but in case of solar concentrating collectors, we are utilizing thermal energy to generate electricity. So, first we have to convert this solar energy to heat, then heat has to be converted to electricity by using this generator. Okay. So, CSP technology generate electricity for a variety of applications like ranging from remote power systems as small as few kilowatt up to grid connected applications of 200 to 350 megawatt or more. A concentrating solar power system that produces 350 megawatt of electricity displaces the energy equivalent of 2.3 million barrels of oil, okay. so which is very very advantageous. And now let us pay more attention on this thermo mechanical system, how this heat energy is converted to electricity. So, as we say thermo mechanical system which convert solar thermal energy to mechanical energy through heat engine using Rankine cycle may be, may be Stirling cycle, may be Breton cycle. Okay. So, this mechanical energy produced may be used as soft power such as water lifting okay. and this mechanical energy produced may also be converted to electricity using generator. So, what are the limitations of this conversion? This conversion efficiency is low, it is about 9 to 18 percent. The efficiency of the collector system decreases as the collection temperature increases, which is reverse in case of heat engine. The efficiency of the heat engine increases as the working fluid temperature increases. The solar collectors are generally more expensive than engine and a part of thermal energy is lost during the transportation of the working fluid from the collector to the heat engine that has to be considered. A very large area is required to install the solar collector system okay. and due to intermittent nature of solar energy, storage of thermal energy is also important. Okay. Now, let us see this picture how this high temperature heat which is generated in the receiver system. Okay. So, as you can see thermic fluids are used in the tube through which heat exchange takes place solar radiation. So, maybe this is the collector. So, heat radiation falls here, beam radiation falls here and strikes in the receiver system. Okay. So, heat transfer fluid flows. So, here this heat will be very very high if we talk about the parabolic trough may be 350 to 400 degree C, it is a very high temperature. Okay. So, the thermic fluid will be heated up okay. and then that will move to thermal generator or maybe heat exchanger. So, that heat will be utilized and then that heat will be used for heating the secondary fluid okay. and then it will pass to the steam turbine okay. because this once that fluid what is used in this Rankine cycle will be expanded in the turbine okay, and that mechanical energy can be converted to electrical energy by using this generator. right? So, 
of course, heat rejection will be there from the turbine. So, this will work in a closed loop. Okay. So, this heat transfer fluid or say the fluid what is used in this cycle may be different from the fluid what is used in this concentrator cycle. right? So, this is how from thermal collectors to the electricity generation takes place. Now, let us learn some of the parameters which characterizes solar concentrators like aperture area. So, if we talk about this tube and this is the reflector part. So, this area is nothing but aperture area. Okay. The area through which solar radiation is incident is nothing but aperture area and this absorber area is something like that. Okay. This is a very long tube if we talk about parabolic trough. The total area of the absorber surface that receives the concentrated radiation, it is also the area from where useful energy can be obtained. Okay. And then acceptance angle which is represented by 2 theta s which defines the angular limit to which the incident ray may deviate from the normal to the aperture plane and still reach the absorber or receiver. Okay. So, this is the aperture angle what you can see here. So, this is sun and this is the receiver okay, earth surface. right? And also we need to know what is intercept factor which defined as the ratio of energy intercepted by the absorber of a given width to the total energy redirected by the focusing device. Okay. So, the amount of radiation which is striking onto this absorber. Okay. So, some of the radiation may not be striking here. Okay. So, it may goes off or maybe it is coming in that way and then it might not be you know, striking this absorber. So, that is why this factor need to be considered. Of course, we are looking for unity, but always you will not get uh, this unity. And also we need to know what is optical efficiency. So, this optical efficiency defines the energy absorbed by the absorber to the energy incident on the concentrator's aperture. It includes the effect of mirror or lens surface shape and reflection transmission losses, tracking accuracy, shading, receiver cover transmittance, absorptance of the absorber and solar beam incident or solar beam incidence effects. So, let us define concentration ratio. Okay. So, how we can define concentration ratio? Concentration ratio is the ratio of aperture area to the absorber area. Okay. So, as I am writing this again and again. So, this is an aperture area. So, maybe A I can write and this is the absorber area. Okay. So, this A A by A P is nothing but C which is concentration ratio. Right. The local concentration ratio can also be defined which is the ratio of solar radiation at any point on the absorber surface to the incident radiation at the aperture of the solar concentrator. Okay. So, you can see the definition of C here and this is very important point like a concentrator with large acceptance angle needs only seasonal adjustment while a concentrator with small acceptance angle is required to track the sun continuously. Okay. So, this is very very important. So, sometimes we need to know design the concentrator in a such a way that you know, it has to operate continuously and sometimes you no know, intermittent uh, adjustment is also fine. Okay. So, this defines uh, acceptance angle you know, is important for deciding this adjustment. Now, let us see the radiative exchange between the sun and the receiver. So, if we consider a black body, sun is always considered as a black body having temperature T s and the radiation from the sun on the aperture or receiver is the fraction of the radiation emitted by the sun 
which is intercepted by the aperture which can be represented by this expression q s 2 r is equal to a a r square by capital R square sigma t s to the power of 4. Okay? So, sigma is known to us which is Stephens Boltzmann's constant and a perfect receiver such as black body radiates energy equal to a r t r to the power 4 this is the receiver temperature and a function of this reaches the sun and the fraction of this reaches the sun. So, this can be expressed by using this expression. right? Now, if I am interested for estimation of maximum concentration ratio, then we need to do something. Okay? Like when T r and T s are the same or fixed values of this T r and T s, the second law of thermodynamics requires that heat transfer from source to the receiver or sun to the receiver should be equal to receiver to the sun. So, if we use this expression then what we will get this kind of expression. Okay? Now, since the maximum value of E r to s is unity the maximum concentration ratio for circular concentrator is found to be 1 by sin square theta s. Okay? This is for circular concentrator. So, geometry of the concentrator may be different. So, this is for circular concentrator and for linear concentrators the maximum concentration ratio is found to be 1 by sin of theta s. Right? So, if we know this theta s which is equal to 0.257 degree the maximum possible concentration ratio for circular concentrator is uh, calculated to be about 46000 and for linear concentrator it is found to be about 215. Okay? Now, let us pay attention about the different configurations of concentrating collectors. As you can see these are tubes and one reflector is placed at the bottom of the tubes and this is one more configurations which is nothing but tubular absorber with specular cups reflectors. So, uh, this kind of configurations are there to increase the concentration ratio. So, normally what happen in case of flat plate collector we will have concentration ratio is equal to 1. Okay? So, if we can increase the concentration ratio, so we can increase the operating temperature of the collector. Right? So, these are different attempts and this is a compound uh, configuration. So, where we can have more radiation exposure and then we can get slightly higher concentration ratio. Okay? And this configuration is for say parabolic trough. So, receiver is here, this is the reflector. Okay? So, these rays are focused on this axis because this is a long tube not a point. Okay? And this configuration is for Fresnel reflectors and this configuration is for arrays of heliostates with central receiver system. Okay? So, we will learn details with uh, time. So, as you understand for point force system this concentration ratio can be defined as 1 by sin square theta and for line focus system this is 1 by sin theta. Okay? So, if we know this theta value then we can straight away calculate what will be the maximum concentration ratio for a point focus system and for a line focus system. Right? And as I said so, these are the attempts to increase the concentration ratios though this first three the maximum concentration ratio can be achieved is 4 okay? and then other configurations of course, no concentration ratios are quite high. The actual value of this concentration ratio C is much lower since the acceptance angle is usually greater than 0 0.267 degree. This includes tracking errors, imperfections in the reflecting or refracting components of the concentrator, mechanical misalignments etcetera. Okay? So, these are the causes of reduction of this actual concentration ratio. And this slide shows the collector type based on concentration ratio. Okay? So, as you can see this planar and non-concentrating type which provides concentration ratios of up to 
four and are of flat plate type. Okay. So, if you see this figure, this vertical axis shows concentration ratio and horizontal axis shows receiver temperature. Okay. So, these are the lower limits and this is the band. Okay. Normally, you know, this is the band at which uh, the concentration ratio falls when temperature increases. Okay. And uh, the ranges of operation or ranges of concentration ratios are shown. So, this is for paraboloid, okay. you can see the range of operation. Of course, no, that can be adjusted uh, by using different means and for conical configurations you can see this is the range and uh, for uh, cylindrical this is the range. Okay. So, for line focus system we can uh, have concentration ratio up to 10 and for point focus system it is very, very high. Okay. So, this slide shows about the comparison of flat plate collector and concentrating collector. As already you are aware that this flat plate collectors are normally used for low temperature applications. So, maximum may be 100, 110 degree C. Okay. For this kind of configurations for concentrator, it may go up to 3500 degree C, okay, starting from 260 degree C. Right? And here in case of flat plate collectors, what primary advantage is, we can employ both normal and diffuse radiation, but in case of concentrator, only normal radiations are applied for energy conversion. So, diffuse radiation cannot be employed or even though diffuse radiation falls on these devices where contribution of these radiations are very, very less. And here no tracking is required, but in case of concentrating collectors tracking is must. And because of this mechanically it is unstable and then it requires maintenance, but in case of flat plate collector maintenance is very, very less. So, let us classify the concentrating collectors, there are different modes of classification. So, based on the aperture type, it is a reflecting type utilizing Fresnel lens or refracting type utilizing mirrors. So, if we have to use mirrors then reflecting surface may be parabolic, spherical or flat that may be continuous or segmented. And classification based on image formation may be non-imaging system or non-imaging type or may be imaging type. So, under imaging type again we have two classes like line focusing type or point focusing type. And based on operating temperatures may be low temperature, medium temperature and high temperature. And then fourth category of classification is based on tracking system. So, single tracking system or two axis or double tracking system. Okay. Sometimes we need double tracking system to track the sun in order to capture more beam radiation. Now, let us see different CSP technologies, what is available. So, first technology is parabolic trough, then this Sterling central power receiver system, then Fresnel collector. Okay. So, what you can see here, so this is a concentrator, okay. this part is concentrator and this is receiver system. So, solar radiation falls here and is reflected to this focal axis. Okay. So, reflector then observer tube then this is solar field piping. So, here as you can see this is an observer tube then over it is a glass cover. So, this is maintained vacuum. So, this is vacuum okay, in order to reduce the heat losses. right? So, in case of this sterling system, so reflector is something like this and it will focus on this system. Okay. So, engine is placed normally sterling engines are attached here, it is a external combustion engine. So, heat is supplied here and then no 
expansion of fluid will be there and from that electricity can be generated directly. And this is central power receiver system. So, here lot of heliostates are there. So, these are heliostates okay, mirrors, solar radiation falls and it is reflected to this receiver system. Okay. So, normally molten salt and oils are used. Okay. So, that may be collected and later on we will have powerhouse here. So, this heat exchange will be there to the secondary fluid of this Rankine cycle and then from that if we have generator we can generate electricity. Okay. This is solar tower and fresnel collectors are something like these are segmented pieces of mirrors solar radiation falls here and strike on this absorber tube and then heated fluid can be taken out for applications. And we can compare those technologies with different aspects like for parabolic trow collectors whether possibility of storage systems are there or not okay? or what are the other advantages we can list it out. Okay? So, if we talk about possibility of integration of storage system it is yes it is possible and advantages includes relatively low installation cost and large experimental feedback is there in case of parabolic trow collector and disadvantages are relatively large area occupied, low thermodynamic efficiency due to low temperature. Okay. So, since this temperature difference is low because of that we will have lower thermodynamic efficiency. And in case of linear fresnel reflectors storage is possible and advantage is relatively low installation cost and disadvantages include low thermodynamic efficiency due to low operating temperature which is primary. For solar power tower it is highly desirable that kind of storage system because that has to be stored huge amount of heat is generated and that has to be stored for night use or maybe when demand is very very high and it is thermodynamic efficiency is high as the operating temperatures are high, but it requires large space area and relatively high installation cost and high heat losses are taking place for this kind of technologies. And in case of parabolic disc, it is difficult to install storage system. Advantages are relatively small area occupied and high thermodynamic efficiency but disadvantages are relatively high installation cost and little experimental feedback. Okay? So, this slide shows about the comparison of four different CSP technologies. Now, let us pay attention about uh, thermal analysis of concentrating collectors. So, under steady state condition the energy balance on the observer plate can be written as something like this. Okay? So, this Q is the useful heat gain and A is the effective area of the aperture of the concentrator and S is the solar beam radiation per unit effective aperture area absorbed in the absorber and Q L is the rate of heat loss from the absorber. Okay? So, if we write Q L that is rate of heat loss in terms of overall loss coefficient so, we can use this expression. Okay? So, Q L is U L A P T P M minus T A. So, T P M is average temperature of the absorber surface okay? and U L is overall loss coefficient. Okay? So, if we use it here Q U is A P into S minus U L then A P T P P M minus T A okay? and if we so, this is A A. Okay? So, if we take out A A S minus U L A P by A A T P M minus T A. Okay? So, we can define concentration ratio now already we know what is concentration ratio. 
a person area to the observer area right. So, this will be 1 by c right. So, q v will be a, a s minus u l by c t p m minus t a ok. So, this is l right. So, this will be useful heat gain right. So, that is how we can write this expression a p multiplied by s minus u l by c t p m minus t a right and c is the concentration ratio. And this slide shows the efficiency versus receiver temperature ok. So, this is the system efficiency and this is the receiver temperature ok at different concentration ratios ok. So, these are different concentration ratios. So, it goes maximum and then it come back to 0 ok. So, it shows the variation of efficiency with respect to receiver temperature at different concentration ratios. So, for flat plate collector concentration ratio is 1, for parabolic trough it is about 80, for solar tower it is 500, parabolic dish about 2000 ok. So, this overall efficiency of a CSP plant can be expressed something like this eta system is eta collector multiplied by eta Carnot ok. So, if you need a Carnot efficiency and collector efficiency then straight away you can calculate what will be the system efficiency of the plant. So, with increase in temperature this collector efficiency is decreases, but Carnot efficiency is increases right. So, that is how we can get higher system efficiency if Carnot efficiency is significantly higher. And this slide shows the applications of uh, CSP in commercial scale and uh, domestic level. So, for commercial scale the CSP can be applied for power generation in standalone mode or maybe grid connected system or maybe hybrid system or maybe to meet the demand of thermal requirement, hot water and steam generation, air conditioning absorption sealers, desalination of sea water by evaporation, solar chemistry, manufacture of metals and semiconductors, hydrogen production maybe water splitting or material testing under extreme conditions like design of materials for subtle reentry ok or as far as domestic applications are concerned it may be applied for hot water generation or maybe HVAC or air conditioning system and solar steam cooking, solar oven or cookers then solar food drying. And also we can compare these technologies with different parameters ok. So, like relative cost then land occupancy, thermodynamic efficiency, operating temperature, solar concentration ratio and then improvement potential right. So, as far as parabolic trough is concerned it is a relatively low cost, but large land is required ok, but thermodynamic efficiency is lower and operating temperature ranges from 20 to 400 degree C and concentration ratio varies from 15 to 45 and improvement potential is limited ok. So, for solar power technology or solar power tower so, it is a very high cost and uh, occupancy is uh, medium. So, not much land area is required. Thermodynamic efficiency is higher and operating temperature is also higher ok. Our concentration ratio you can see it varies from 150 to 1500 ok and improvement potential is very very significant. In case of linear Fresnel reflector it is a relatively low cost and land occupancy is medium, thermodynamic efficiency is low, operating temperature may go up to 300 degree C and concentration ratio varies from 10 to 40 and there are a lot of scope for improvement. And parabolic disc collector, so it is a very high cost, land requirement is small, thermodynamic efficiency is high because operating temperatures are high 
and uh, you can see the operating temperature 120 to 1500 degree C and concentration ratio varies up to 1000 and it has got lot of potential for improvement. So, now let us pay attention about the analysis of parabolic trough collector. Okay? So, let us consider this configuration. So, we will have solar field, then you have observe, uh, observer tube and then reflector. right? So, if we take a section, so it appears like this. So, this is concentrator okay? and this is the receiver system. So, when we call receiver system, it includes absorber tube plus this glass cover okay, which is placed concentrically and PECOM is maintained in between this. Okay. So, if we consider a section, so this is the tube through which heat transfer fluid flows okay, and if we take the length of the tube, okay, this is the length of the tube and start from is x is equal to 0, maybe x is equal to 0 here okay, and it moves something like this and take a section dx. Okay. So, fluid is flowing from this tube. So, maybe at this point fluid temperature is Tf and at this point this fluid temperature is Tf plus dTf. Okay. So, we will assume some parameters or some of the information like radiation flux is same along the length. Okay. So, it is assumed that this radiation flux which is falling in the observer is same. Okay. Of course, there will be some differences in actual case, but what we will consider is same and temperature drop across the observer tube and the glass cover are neglected. Okay. So, this is observer tube, this is a glass cover, so temperature drop is neglected, okay. it will be same. right? So, this aperture of the concentrator is W which is represented here and length is L is the length of the tube is L. So, this length or we can say this is the length. Okay. So, this length is L. So, I can write this way also this length will be L okay, along the length. So, length of this tube and rim angle is phi r it should be here. So, rim angle is phi r. So, this is the phi r okay. and this observer inner diameter is d i and outer diameter is d o okay. and concentric glass cover inner diameter is d c i. So, here so thickness will be here. So, it has got some thickness then outer diameter is DCO right? and the fluid is heated from inlet temperature TFI here at this point is TFI, TFI it is TFO okay? so outlet temperature is TFO okay? and, and let M be the mass flow rate, okay? mass flow rate of the fluid that is flowing through the tube. Right? And if we are interested about concentration ratio of this configuration, so, it will be something like this effective aperture area to the absorber tube area. Okay. So, this effective aperture area is something like W minus this D, okay, D naught, D naught is the outer diameter of the tube multiplied by L okay, is the length to the pi D L. So, D naught is the diameter of this tube. Okay. So, that way if this L is common in numerator and denominator, this will goes off then W minus D naught divided by pi D naught is the expression for concentration ratio. So, if we know a parser of the concentrator and then outer diameter of the absorber, then we can straight away calculate what will be the concentration ratio of that configuration. Okay? Now, let us draw an energy balance or write an energy balance uh, expression on the absorber plate. So, this energy balance on an elementary slice of the absorber tube at the distance x from the inlet. So, this gives a relationship of something like this. So, Q v is the useful heat gain which is equal to I b into R b W minus D naught rho gamma tau alpha is for beam radiation. Okay? because beam radiation is only employed. So, this part is the direct radiation which is falling on the absorber tube and this part is for losses. 
So, this component is coming from the reflector. So, from here, from this reflector, solar radiation is falling here, it will go, this will, this will go. Okay? So, first component is contribution from this reflected radiations. Okay? Second component is, since this is exposed to the sun, so it will directly fall on this absorber. Okay? And this is the losses. So, you will it take care of this conduction and convection losses okay, from the absorber tube. Right? So, this IB is the beam radiation and uh, tilt this RB is the no, that component which has to be multiplied because all the radiations are not coming. So, some losses will be there. Okay? Then this is the reflectivity of the reflector and this is the gamma which has to be multiplied because all the radiations are not coming and striking on the absorber and these values are already defined and these are the losses and Tp is the absorber plate temperature or absorber tube temperature, this is the ambient temperature and this is the dx or is the slice. Okay? So, absorber solar flux we can write something like this. Okay? So, using this equation in equation A, then this equation simplifies to something like this okay? and also heat gain rate we know HF multiplied by pi di Tp minus Tfi dx which is nothing but Mcp dt because mass is flowing. So, M is the mass product under specific heat of the thermic fluid and we know the temperature difference Tfi and Tfo. Okay? From that we can calculate what is the rate of heat transfer this M C P D T right. So, now combining this equation C and D what we will have useful heat gain in that particular section will be something like this. So, F dash is the collector efficiency vector which can be expressed something like this. Okay? And if we combine this equation E and F then we will have this kind of equation and uh, we need to integrate this using the initial conditions at x is equal to 0 T F is equal to T F i which is already shown. Right? So, once you do it, then we will get a temperature distribution of something like this. Okay? So, fluid temperature is obtained by putting T f is equal to T f i and x is equal to x naught. So, now this should be T f o. So, if x is equal to L, the T f will be T f o. Right? So, if we substitute this, then we can have this kind of configuration. So, now we can calculate what is the useful heat gain rate. Okay? So, this useful heat gain rate can be calculated and it is found to be something like this. Right? And also we can define collector heat removal factor which is expressed by this expression. Okay? So, once we know this then we can calculate what will be the instantaneous efficiency of the collector. So, this instantaneous efficiency is expressed something like QU by IB into RB plus ID into RD W into L. Okay? So, this is the diffuse radiation component which is coming from the ground. Okay? Sometimes this may be neglected. Okay? If we neglect this term, then this equation for instantaneous collector efficiency simplifies to this equation. So, if we know QU and IB into RB multiplied by W into L, then straight away you can calculate what will be the instantaneous collector efficiency. Right? So, RB already we know for beam radiation what is the RB? It is the cos theta by cos of theta z. Okay? So, there is a long expression for all the angles. So, uh, this can be calculated and IB is known and see here no diffuse components are present. Okay? only beam radiations are uh, included. Okay? So, this analysis will be very much important to characterize a parabolic trough. So, we must know the procedure how this can be characterized. So, now next phase is how to calculate the heat transfer coefficient. So, once we know those values instantaneous efficiency value, FR value, F values and then useful heat gain, then we need to know 
the heat transfer coefficient, how this heat exchange is taking place from the collector to the absorber, then absorber tube to the glass tubes and then fluid. So, all the things we need to calculate. Okay? So, this overall heat transfer coefficient and uh, heat transfer correlations need to be understand. So, this is the QL, okay? heat losses, we can express QL in terms of UL as well and also we can use this expression for calculation of heat loss. And then heat transfer coefficient between the absorber tube and the cover can be estimated by using this expression, this R is the modified Reynolds number okay, which is defined something like this. Okay. Once you know this then finally, what we can calculate the heat transfer coefficient from the plate to the cover. Okay. And then next phase is to calculate heat transfer coefficient on the outside surface of the cover. Okay. So, the correlations proposed by hill parts are normally used. So, it is expressed Nusselt number is equal to C1 multiplied by Reynolds number to the power of n. Okay. So, there are different conditions for Reynolds number value between 40 to 4000 this C1 to be used as 0.615 and N will be 0.466. And for a value of Reynolds number between 4000 to 40000 C1 to be used as 0.174 and N is equal, equal to 0.618 and for this, so if real number is very very high which is more than 40,000 and less than 4 lakhs then we need to use this set of data for calculation of heat transfer coefficient on the outside surface of the cover. Also we can use some alternate correlations developed by Sursili and Brenstein. Okay. So, this correlation is valid up to a Reynolds number of 10 to the power of 7 and if this Reynolds number is in between 20,000 to 4 lakh then we can go for this correlation. So, there is slight change in this value. Okay. So, this is the difference. So, here it will be 1 by 2 of this section and but here it is 5 by 8 and then 4 by 5 whole to the power this bracket section. So, once you know this Reynolds number and Parnell number is known at that temperature and then we can calculate what is heat transfer coefficient because Nessel number is H L or D now it will be L H D by K or sometimes it is D also. Okay. So, H L or H D by K. So, once we know this K L or D then we can calculate what is H okay, or heat transfer coefficient. So, this heat transfer coefficient on the inside surface of the absorber tube, if I am interested to know, then we need to go for this kind of correlation. Okay. Nusselt number is equal to 3.66 okay, for the flow having Reynolds number less than 2000. Okay. So, if the flow is turbulent having Reynolds number more than 2000, then we need to use the correlations developed by detached Voltaire which is something like this. Nusselt number is equal to 0 0.023 multiplied by Reynolds number to the power of 0 0.8 and Prandtl number to the power of 0 0.4. Okay. So, we can calculate the heat transfer coefficient on the inside surface of the absorber tube by using these correlations. Okay. But while using this correlation, we must pay attention about this assumption. right? Just flow is fully developed that assumption has to be done and it is valid as L by d i is larger than 20. Okay? So, under that condition we can use you no know, flow is fully developed and we can have this kind of expression. And Hong and Barclays developed a correlation which is expressed something like this. Okay? So, apart from Reynolds number and Prandtl number, one 
term is there which is x, is x is nothing but tap twist ratio. Okay? So, sometimes what happens heat transfer in a flow can be augmented by using some kind of twisted taps. Okay? So, if this kind of taps are introduced in that flow tube then heat transfer coefficient enhances. Okay? So, in order to define this twisted tap or this kind of configuration we need to define this twist ratio. Okay? So, this x is nothing but h by d i. So, h is nothing but length over which the tap is twisted through 180 degree. Okay? So, this is something like twisting. Okay? So, once it is twisted and it is introduced in that flow tube, okay, then it is uh, investigated that heat transfer is augmented okay, or heat transfer can be enhanced by applying twisted tap in a flow process. Okay. Also, once we done with this heat transfer coefficient, researchers are interested to know the pressure drop, how much pressure drop is taking place. Okay. So, there are many correlations to investigate this pressure drop. One of the correlations which is applied here in concentrating collectors are proposed by Date and Singham, which is expressed something like this F multiplied by Reynolds number is equal to 38.4. Reynolds number divided by x to the power of 0 0.05. Okay? So, this value should be in between this range and uh, also this friction factor multiplied by Reynolds number can be expressed something like this okay? if this value is more than 100. Okay? So, this c can be calculated by using this expression. Okay? So, x is known to us from here and then if we apply here and we will get C2 once we know C2 and Reynolds number is known to us then we can calculate F okay, which is friction vector. So, once we know friction vector we can we can calculate the pressure drop. Okay. So, this is 4 F L V square by twice G. Okay. So, that way we can calculate uh, the pressure drop. right? So, let us summarize uh, what uh, we have discussed today. Primarily, we have discussed the fundamentals of concentrating collectors and also the classifications which are made based on reflecting type utilizing mirrors, refracting type utilizing Fresnel lenses, imaging technologies, it may be point focus system or may be line focus system. Okay? So, if we are talking about point focus system, it is a high concentration ratio and its operating temperature is very, very high. And in case of line focus system, even though concentration ratio is comparatively higher, but uh, it cannot achieve as normally done in case of point focus system. Okay? And uh, there is also one basis of classifying is concentration ratio, which is nothing but the operating temperatures as you can see. So, as the operating temperature increases, this concentration ratio also increases. And tracking also one of the classifications, what kind of tracking normally adopted may be single axis tracking, may be double axis tracking. Okay? So, based on the requirement that can be decided and also we have learned the energy balance on an observer plate of a concentrating collectors. So, this Q u can be expressed something like A p multiplied by S minus U l by C multiplied by T p m minus T a where U l is the overall loss coefficient and A A is the aperture area, C is the concentration ratio. Okay? So, if we know mean absorber plate temperature or tube temperature and ambient and solar flux, we can calculate what will be the useful heat gain. Okay? Also, we have learned the analysis of parabolic trough collectors and heat transfer coefficient. Okay? How this can be calculated, heat transfer coefficient uh, can be calculated and how this can be applied for calculation of useful heat gain. right? Because as you know Q u is S into A A minus Q L. Okay? So, this in order to calculate this Q L we need to learn this heat transfer coefficient. So, once we know this heat transfer coefficient of different uh, system from where to where it heat transfer is taking place. So, once you know this 
we can substitute in this equation and we can calculate what will be the useful heat gain. Okay? So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching.